Let's go, boys. No big deal today on the Ray and Adam show. The golden goose himself. Oh, shit. Sorry. Got this new microphone. And I, how's that? Is that better? Well, uh, still getting used to it, eh? Yeah. I'm just not used to it. Like, it's just, it's really, it's pretty intimate, this microphone. I'm not going to oh, lie. Yeah, right, right in your personal space. But right hey, in my personal space. Um, whether you're here with, uh, from YouTube, Apple, Spotify, make sure you give it a like, subscribe, swipe up. I don't give a shit. Just get in here and start making some money. Hello. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Love it. Uh, guys, thanks. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. We've got a great show. Um, uh, and Kenny, thanks for hopping on short notice. Our, uh, our other guest who we are going to have on soon, uh, Kernsey, who's an absolute beauty and a borderline legend. I don't like throwing around the word legend too, too frivolously, but he's more of a phenom, I would say. Ooh, a phenom. Like for all you, uh, all you new people who are wondering how long it's going to take to start making some money, that would probably be a guy you want to learn from because he just came in and just started making money right from the get go. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, we're going to get Kernsey on soon, but Kenny, thanks for, uh, thanks for filling in on such short notice. This is awesome. So for those of you that don't know, um, Kenny is an actual legend. Um, quite literally, um, you know, the, the only reason that Kenny's not a household name is simply because of the fact that that sports betting world is not as prevalent and as known as things like poker or things like that. Like we're sitting here with this is Phil Helmuth. This is well, maybe you're not you're not as big an asshole as Hel- Helmuth, I don't think. <laughs> Doyle Brunson. Doyle Brunson. Hey, yeah, we're we're on with it. We're on with an, an actual legend here, guys. Um, Kenny, did, did Tiger Woods that. ask you f- for your autograph? Or <laughs> <laughs> how did that go? Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we should uh, tell that story. Let's start with the story about like, you know, sports betting can take you some pretty interesting places, and it took you to sure. uh, to getting a a freaking putting lesson from this guy named Tiger Woods, who's good at golf. Yeah. 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 Tiger was, uh, Tiger, that was an amazing experience. So basically DraftKings was running a contest, um, for, it was for volume and they had different tier. They, uh, DraftKings has different tiers. They have Onyx, which I'm in the Onyx. They have, um, diamond, gold, silver, uh, bronze. But anyway, they were giving a trip to Vegas for all, for like, I think gold, diamond and, and, uh, Onyx. Um, but for the Onyx tier, you actually got a putting lesson with, uh, with Tiger Woods. Well, I couldn't really compete for the week that it was set. The, the, the contest was set scheduled to set for. So I texted my host and said, Hey, I usually finish in like the top one, two or three of these contests. Whenever you run them, um, I'm not going to be available. Is there any way I can trade some of my crowns, anything I can do to, to get this tiger? What tiger woods experience because i was i had a cruise scheduled for you know with my family i was like i'm not going to cancel the cruise but i almost would want to cancel the cruise to try to compete in this contest she's like let me talk to a couple people she talked to her boss her, his boss talked to, to his boss and and next thing you know they were just going to comp me the uh the, the whole experience which was um pretty pretty amazing um i told my wife after it was on a friday friday morning i i did all that and I said Friday night to my wife outside of, you know, me marrying you and the birth of our two kids Friday. That was the greatest day of my life. I basically woke up at like 6 a.m., got transported by limo to to a really exclusive um, golf course in Vegas, uh, Shadow Creek, um, where I met. uh, We had like a a catered catered breakfast and uh, I saw Larry Fitzgerald there and Reggie Bush. And, you know, I'm having breakfast with them. And then. And then I get escorted down to the putting green where, where Tiger was. Um, and it was like a 45 minute to an hour putting lesson. Like it was, it was kind of, I kind of expected just be kind of a meet and greet, maybe get a quick picture. Um, but it ended up being like, like he actually went through like how he putts, like, like it was an actual lesson. It was, it was pretty cool. And it was only like three of us there that, that were getting the, uh, the putting amazing. lesson. But yeah, we got to, you know, just kind of talk and then, about 10 minutes before the putting lesson uh, was over, uh, Colin Morikawa came down to the putting green, met with all of us and everything. It was just a uh, really, really surreal experience. And then, of course, I got to play Shadow Creek um, uh, right afterwards in a uh, in an outing. 
um, which was an amazing golf course, um, super exclusive. Uh, and then, uh, then they had a pi- tiger poker night where, um, I thought I was just getting tickets to, to go watch it. Um, with me, like me and my wife, we got two tickets, but one was actually an entry to play in the poker tournament, which there was only 50 people in the tournament. It was $11,000 buy-in. Helmuth was, was emceeing it. I was sitting next to Helmuth. Um, Daniel Negreanu was in it. Tiger was in it. Um, there were a bunch of, uh, bunch of different poker stars and, and Reggie Bush was playing in it and, and, uh, and, you know, athletes as well, but, um, right on. Yeah, it, was, you, it was a really, really cool tournament. experience. What I actually day. was the, I was the chip leader at the first break and I won wow. a, um, I want a Genesis actually have it over here. Um, I want a, uh, a signed, um, Tiger Woods signed Genesis, uh, pin flag. Wow. But, a Sega yeah, Genesis. Yeah, pretty cool experience. Sega yeah. Genesis would be cool too. <laughs> Making a but, comeback. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's, uh, that's so cool. So Kenny, um, you know, we all know you're successful. Like typically the people that get invited to these things, are they, are they guys just dropping big coin? Like, does it matter whether you're winning, losing, or like who, who um, are the other guys there? Like, well, the, I, my foursome was all DraftKings people. Um, and it was, it was, uh, it was pretty cool to just kind of, uh, one was a, one, one guy was there from DFS, uh, Daily Fantasy. Uh, one guy was there from Casino. So, you know, he's most likely a giant, giant loser. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> the other guy in my, in my um, foursome was um, actually, uh, ironically, he was not a better himself, but he was there for sports, but he was not a better himself. He was there because, a big better was using his account. So he got the perk because the big uh-huh. better probably got limited by DraftKings and, and couldn't, um, couldn't you couldn't use the, the trip himself. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, That's yeah. kind of sweet perk of giving up your, uh, address and, uh, username, email address. <laughs> you end up uh, with a private party with Tiger Woods. Pretty crazy. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it was a, a amazing experience. Uh, Kenny, I'm not sure if Tiger mentioned it, but um, like now that the Rain Adams show has really taken off, uh, you know, I met Tiger in 1996. I'm not, I'm not sure if he brought that up or not. It was brief. It was only a couple seconds, but like he had never won a major or even a professional golf tournament prior to him and I meeting. And then after like, you know, look what oh, he did. Wow. So, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if he gives me credit or not. Um, <laughs> you know, I like to think I played a small role. Um, you know, uh, oh, Earl, definitely for sure. Earl, uh, Butch, <laughs> I like to think I'm just below Butch in the grand scheme of things, but he didn't mention it. Hey, eh? I guess no. <laughs> no, he didn't, he didn't mention it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's the worst when guys forget where they came from and what got them there. But I guess, <laughs> I guess Actually, and they're just uh, talking about the other gamblers that were on it. There was a guy on the bus next to me and, um, he was totally breaching DraftKings terms of service too with this, but he's on the phone next to a DraftKings rep. But like I'm kind of in the middle. He's sitting next to me on, on like the, like in the limo area. And the guy on the other side of him is a draft, like a high DraftKings rep. He's on his phone calling somebody from back home where he lives to put in like hundreds of thousands worth of bets for him. And I'm like, you realize that person, you know, he's like, yeah, my DraftKings login is this. And he's like saying it like, you know, like t- talking to the guy. I, I found it so hysterical. These, but the guy's literally making like hundreds of thousands worth of bets. He shows me his DraftKings balance. It's like 3.8 million. I'm like, wow, this guy makes me look like a small better. Wow. But at the same time, the only reason he's probably allowed to put those size bets in is probably because he's down probably 50 yeah. million to them. Like who knows what that guy's down yeah. to him. That, but, that day just wasn't quite exciting enough for him. He needed some action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but Unreal. pretty wild stuff. Yeah. yeah no kidding. kidding me. It's, um, you know, it's it, everything that we're hearing. Like, obviously this is really cool, Kenny. And I, like, I'm super happy for you and all your success. I mean, for those of you who, you know, haven't, haven't spent any time with Kenny or gotten to know him. I mean, like you just got a heart as, well, I think your, your, your head's pretty big. I've seen it in person, but your heart's just as big as your head. And that's like, <laughs> I don't know if you guys, like, I don't know if you can see just how big Kenny's head is, but like, remember like a, an old Mac computer monitor from like 1996, that's about how big 
is Kenny's head is, and his heart's even bigger. Um, just a, wow. just a, you know, a tremendous, tremendous human. We all, we all love you. Um, so really happy for you to, to have these experiences and all the success you're having, but it's also really cool to see um, this industry growing the way it is and becoming more mainstream. I mean, this was, this wasn't the kind of thing that you would see all that long ago in the sports betting world, right? Like these would be reserved for, you know, guys that blow shit loads in blackjack at, at, you know, at Vegas or, um, you know, big poker players or, or things like that. So like, it's really cool to see this industry and something that, you know, everybody, everybody uh, involved with, uh, with in play live and what we're doing. I mean, there's a passion that comes with it. And so it's really cool to see it get legitimized and all that stuff. And I, I think this is just the start. Hey, Kenny, like this is just the yeah, beginning for sure. For sure. J- just in speaking with that, like you, they would never talk on like ESPN about a spread in a game or a total or anything like that. And you, you hear announcers talk about it all the time. I mean, yeah. now they have shows about it, like the bad beat show. And that's, that's really popular on ESPN. Like you, you just wouldn't, wouldn't have seen that even 10, 15 years ago, just because it was kind of such a, such a, a hush hush you know like you know site you know kind back of, back door type thing with, with yeah. sports betting because it was only legal in nevada w- within the states anyway i don't know how if it's the same in canada as well yeah. but 10 years ago they basically they didn't talk about spreads or anything on you know with, with pertaining to sports yeah the closest we could get was uh um trying to guess which side al michaels had his big bet on like you could usually figure it out by about the third quarter who he was on um, cause I, you know, he's pretty, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of rumors about how much he likes to wager on things. And you can, you can generally tell at the end of a game, if there's a, you know, if it's a circus at the end of the game, you can tell by the tone of his voice, which side of that bet he was on. <laughs> but other than that, like, you're right. Like they didn't talk about, it. I mean, shit now, like, like up in Canada, there are, there are commercials in between every period with, you know, somebody from a different betting site talking about, you know, you know, we think this is maybe a good bet for the second half or, or second period yeah. or, or whatever. Right. Like it's just, right. it's so mainstream. It's just awesome. So current odds yep. being shown all the time, logos on the boards, on the ice, whatever. Like, right. Yeah. right. I think yeah. bet 99s on uh, the Alouettes Jersey this year too, aren't they? Is it really? Yeah. Well, yeah, and I know in like in like AFL, like well, I mean, obviously in Australia, I guess it's been legal for years, but but they have like in the AFL at halftime, they have like a points bet, like who you're going to take in the second half, and like they have like a whole points five minute points bet segment at the half of every AFL game. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's it's so cool that it's happening, and and you know what, like it's nice that it's happening because it was happening anyway. It just wasn't mainstream, right? And it wasn't as right. like legit and it wasn't you know and it it it's what gives us confidence that what we're doing is is sustainable and and not just sustainable but um but it's going to grow over time right like there now with some of the with some of the live action matter there are some cool things like you can bet on the speed of pitches coming in um i just talked to a guy the other day who uh he works in the uh, in the penalty box at the older game, like he, he works for the league works. Uh, and, and he was saying that they're putting um, uh, tracking tags on every Jersey. And pretty soon you're going to be able to bet on, um, on the top speed that Connor McDavid hit in a game or things like that. Wow. Like, like, you know, and, and not to say that those are going to be, you know, those main market bets that we're going to do, but it shows you kind of where they're thinking. Right. And yeah, I, I kind of giggle at how long it took, the the various leagues to get behind this. Like they talked about sports betting, like it was, you know, well, we don't want that. You know, we don't want to talk about that. Well, what a right. great way to grow your game. Oh, yeah. right? oh like, I, I, and I try to make it as uh, fun as possible. Yeah. I commend uh, Mark Cuban for, for that with basketball. He, he's been trying to get uh, sports legalized forever. He's like, it's only going to make my, my team worth that much more. It'll make all the NBA teams worth that much more because there'll be that much more interest in the game. Cause it's, it's one thing to watch a game. You're, you're not going to watch an out of market game, a team, two teams that you could care less about unless you have something invested, even if it's $5 or whatever, but it makes the game so much more fun to watch. Absolutely. Um, But like my cousin's a diehard Flyers fan. He loves, he loves the Flyers, loves hockey, but he, he, there's no way he would be even be watching the playoffs right now. If he, if he wasn't a member of our group, um, 
that you know where he's wagering on 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 the hockey game yeah for sure but, yeah well it's funny like when ray and i were were little guys um you know our dad you say okay look like you know what are we gonna do friday night well we can or saturday night well you guys want to rent a movie movie's gonna be five bucks we're gonna rent this movie or you can each buy a uh, a, a three dollar sports select ticket right and then and then make that our entertainment for the night and and like that's where we that's where we started learning about this stuff. And, you know, he, we, we weren't very good at it. Um, you know, sports like isn't a great way to make money. Um, but it's, it's where that started that passion of, of, but we were paying you know, for entertainment. We we're paying for entertainment now. and it cheap right. entertainment and way better than a stupid movie. Um, it was yeah. awesome. So um, yeah. So actually let's talk about the NHL playoffs. I, uh, I went to game four last night in Edmonton and uh, I must've been wild. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I was in 06 when the Oilers had their cup run all the way to game seven in the final. I was at just about every playoff game. I think I missed just a, just a few. Um, and I thought that was the best atmosphere I've ever seen. And like, I've been to lots of really great events. Um, you know, I've been to, to, I don't even know how many games in Buffalo. Buffalo is known like the bills are known for having, you know, some of the rowdiest crowds you're ever going to see. And I've been to some crazy games there. I've been to some crazy NHL playoff games. I got to say, like, I've never seen, I've never seen anything like it. Like I've never seen anything like what I saw last night. Um, the energy in that building, like the second you walked in, I was trying to film it and I went and watched uh, some of the stuff I filmed later and it doesn't do any of it justice. That building was on fire. Like I'm, I'm still really struggling how to, how to explain it. And then to get the start, the Oilers did, and then to, to blow it. Like for those of you who watched the game, Oilers started up three, nothing after the first period, Calgary scores a couple. And then with like nine minutes left, Mike Smith lets a goal in from the other team's blue line, like the other team's blue. Yeah, line. That was crazy. That goal was, yeah. was insane. And, and the app, like, like that building, like outside of the two flames fans sitting beside or sitting behind me, like you could have heard a pin drop in that building and everybody was just like, what, <laughs> what just happened? Like nobody could figure it out. And they were on the, really and, and, and the Oilers were on the power play. The and time. they were on the power play. Yeah. And so, you know, and in, in years past, like that would have made that Oilers team just, wilt and fold and they didn't most teams would, would in that situation like that's totally. a pretty deflating thing to happen and didn't face yeah. when when nude scored the go-ahead goal that place went like that's as loud as i've ever heard any building ever until kane scored his empty netter that place when kane scored that goal like it that was louder than what a goal would have been in overtime like it was in Sane. And then after the game, the carnage and the craziness after the game, like I took a video of this kid who was standing on, it was outside of the, the arena, right beside the Gretzky statue. And there's this, uh, this sign that's about this thick and about that wide. And somehow this kid got on top of the sign. Somebody tossed him a Mickey of whiskey and he downs the Mickey of whiskey. And then he starts dancing and he rips his shirt off and he's going crazy. And there must've been, probably a thousand people around him just going ape shit for this kid. <laughs> and then it turns out he goes to school with my daughter. He's like 17. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. So like it was, yeah, you saw it on, on, I uh, got some comments. People saw it on, on social media. Yeah, saw yeah. It was, it was insane. So like, I don't know what's next in that series. I, you know, it, you'd be foolish to make any predictions, um, but it really does seem like McDavid is on like another planet right now. Like it's just crazy. He has, he has, he has 25 points in 11 games. Yeah. Dry Seidel has 22 points in on one leg. He's playing on one leg. He has 22 points and Kane has 12 goals in 11 games. Like these are like numbers from the eighties. Like this is not, this is not what's supposed to happen in this area of hockey or era of hockey. It's just, it's mind boggling. Hopefully uh, Calgary wins the next two. I'd like to see that get that series go seven. 
Well, wow. we had a good show. Do we have any more guests we can get lined up here? Thanks for coming on. Ken. I just want to see. I want to see the series go seven. I want to see Edmonton win, but I just want more hockey. You want more action? <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Let's talk about Kenny. Let's talk about your relationship with the game of hockey. Uh, two years ago, um, you weren't even sure how many pucks they used at a time. Like <laughs> yeah. two years ago, I had zero knowledge. You nothing. Hockey. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I watched it like back when I was like thirteen, when there was like uh, like. Beret and Beret. Beret. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Name that yeah, guy with the funny hat, donkey. <laughs> Russian dude. <laughs> like Gretzky, Lemieux. Like that was the era that I watched of, yeah. of hockey. I would say like early 90s. Um, and they had like two I, line pass. I watched that Brad so I, Pitt movie yesterday called Furre. It was pretty good. It was a war movie. Furry? Fur, furry? I thought it was furry. Oh, furry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they shoot people with tanks, right? Yeah, sorry. So, but anyway, beret. But I, I but I didn't really watch much hockey even then. Like my friends watched right. a little bit. I watched. I I watched very little. I don't think I've ever watched an entire game from start to finish ever in my life, and still haven't to this day. Uh, but I am starting to enjoy it more. Uh, but I still have never watched a game actually from like the start of the first period all the way to the end of the game. Still, hang, hang on one second. Just and I want to ask a second question before I ask. Okay. You've made like an obscene amount of money betting on hockey. Yes. Like yes. obscene. And we're not even going to yes. say what the number is, but if you're listening at home, whatever number you have in your head, double it and add a zero and you might be close. <laughs> like whatever you have in your head, you have no clue how, like it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Kenny, have you ever been yeah. to a hockey game? I've been the one hockey game. <laughs> I've been the one hockey. It was a, uh, <laughs> my friend dragged me to a Flyers game and they wanted to stay the whole time. And I was so bored after the second period, I left and didn't even watch the third period. Now, this was way before I was betting on hockey, but sure. I was so bored after the second period. And we had like nice <laughs> seats. We were like, like five rows back, like center ice. And, and we, uh, we had some really good seats. Like you could see everything, like, you know, but I was like, I am so bored at this point. I'm like, I'll, I, 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 we were tailgating before. I was like, I'm going to go go have a few beers in the car instead of paying, you know, fifteen dollars for a beer here. So I was like, I, I went back to the car and continued drinking at the car and just listened to the game on the radio. I, I might actually put the Phillies game on the radio or something. I, I don't know. And I'm bored with baseball too. But <laughs> unreal, unreal. Yeah, Maybe into, one day we got to get you a game. Um, for those my of you, main but, sports that I like are, are are football and basketball. They're they're my they're my favorite they're two sports. But I but now not I wouldn't say that now. Now hockey's definitely right up there, right up there with them. Kenny, let's let's talk about um, some of the people that you've mentored and some of the people that you've taught how to do this with. I mean, we have this this group called In Play Live, and it's it's an extraordinary program. Um, lots of fun, you know you're going to learn loads and loads of new skills and, 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 you know, different things to, uh, sorry, my mic wasn't close enough there. You're going to learn all sure. sorts of things that are going to, you know, have a really great impact on your life, but you've, you've got kind of a, a crew that you've put under your wing and, and you've been mentoring and teaching how to, how to do this. How many, uh, how many people have you, you mentored, uh, this, you know, in the last couple of years, how many people have you, have you taught how to do this? Um, I have had some failed students as well, um, but mostly, mostly they've succeeded. Um, my, um, as long as they stay sober, they're good. Uh, so basically rules, the, the, what, the, rules for you, but not for me, Kenny, is that, is that lesson <laughs> one? Do, do as yes, I say, for, not as I do. <laughs> for, for, no, no, no. Like I'm not even talking, it was not even alcohol. It was uh, like, okay. the one guy used to come high all the time. Okay. Um, but so like, and I was like, dude, did you get that bad? And he'd be like, huh? Huh? <laughs> so I'm like, come on, dude, you got to cut it down a little bit but yeah. uh but anyway um that was the only one the only failed student that really sticks out in my mind but um uh i've had some people that have had some struggles uh like um my one really good friend he 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 struggled he made six figures in his first year but it was more of a, a struggle 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 he's up um, well over six six figures this year like two or three times over since um the start of january um so we're in we're in may now so in 
you know, so in five months, he's, he's, uh, he's definitely over a quarter million, I believe at this point. Um, so but um, people on the outside would have no ability to comprehend how someone could inefficiently make a hundred grand in their first year. And, but like, it's totally, like, I can totally relate. It's totally true. Like the, the sky is the limit. Uh, yeah. With this stuff. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. I would say all told, it's probably in the around around ten people total um, that I've that I've kind of privately mentored, and and all of them are six figures at this point. Unbelievable. How many of them well have either? Uh, how many of them have either uh, quit their job to do this full time, or or this has now become their main source of income? Um, I would say pretty much all of them. It's their main source of income at this point. Yeah. yeah, some of them are still working. Some of them own businesses, um, but uh, but pretty much all of them, I would say this is their main source of income. Right. Do you guys, and I'll ask this question to both both of you, do um, you find it frustrating when, when people sort of think that because you're winning at sports betting that it's easy? Like, like that what you do um, – doesn't deserve the same respect as if you made the same amount of money working at a nine to five job, you know, like, does it, does it sort of bug you that people dismiss how much work goes into this? I think it does, but I, but I think I, a lot of the people that I know, um, I mean, I would say the only people that kind of give me that would be my, my wife's friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like my wife's like good friends and, and things that kind of act like, Oh, well, you don't have a real job. Like, like they never, they always like, that's, that's the one that irritates me when they say you don't have a real job. Um, that's, uh, that's the only thing that really irritates me. Right. Um, but that, and that's usually my wife's friends that say that, but like all of my friends, they, they know how much time I put into this. They know, you know, how dedicated I am to this. So it's, it's, um, they know, you know, which, which sacrifices I give up. You know, because you know the the unfortunate thing is is the sports aren't on you know nine a.m. to five p.m. Like it was almost great during COVID, like betting the overseas stuff, um, you know, during COVID because I felt like I had a regular nine to five job at that point because I'm betting you know Australian football and it starts at five a.m. in the morning, so I'm done by like noon. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's whatever. But uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's tough because of the hours that we work, but. But yeah, the only thing that really irritates me is when, you know, they, they say, you know, you don't have a, you don't have a regular job. There, there's been, I'll add to that and maybe throw a cliche in there where I, I would say that happiness comes from within. And like, if people don't, it's impossible for people to get it. Most people are just like, yeah, whatever floats your boat kind of thing. Good for you. Um, but it's, I mean, you can't let it bother you if, if they don't think it's, real or legitimate or, you know, yeah, or whatever else they're saying. But, um, we, we, we know, uh, we know full well, uh, what goes yeah. into it and, and, uh, what, what creates that success. But I just wanted to, I just want to jump back to, I mean, you said you mentored 10 people. I think that's, uh, selling yourself short where you're at the top of this with Pacer day in day out showing people your strategies and and the tree is pretty big like there's the oh yeah yeah, yeah I've, 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 i was talking we're just, now mentoring just, people yep and yep. like it's 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 uh like i wouldn't even want to imagine how much money you've created outside of the money you've made yourself like it's uh it's it's a big big number yeah yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just talking about my my friends that I knew right. prior to yeah. in play live, but yeah, since in play live, I definitely feel like I've I've helped um, a lot of people. Kenny, outside of um, smoking too much dope while you're betting, um, what what have you seen that will prevent people from winning? Right, because like everything, I, I, nothing's foolproof, but you know, clearly what's happening here is not a fluke, right? Like with as many people winning on, right. you know, against books that you're not supposed to beat, right? Like, like I talked about this a little bit last week, these, the books that we're betting with, they have some of the most brilliant um, minds on this planet, like in terms of statistics and odds and probabilities, helping them set the lines for these things. 
and we're just a bunch of regular dudes and or men and women. There's, you know, alike and we're beating them consistently. Like it sounds impossible. It sounds insane. Yet we're doing it. Um, you know, really is remarkable what, uh, what's happening here. So um, I can't remember where my punchline for that one. I guess that's it. Just pretty fucking remarkable when you think about it. Yeah. Um, so, Oh, I remember what I was going to, I was going to say. So, so we've got like methods that are very much tried and true and they're, you know, they're working. What do you see from people that prevents them from finding success with all these great tools that we're, that we're providing? What are the most common things you see? I would say the biggest, um, the biggest thing is money management um, and being able to, um, and it, this comes with time too. And, and that's, I think that's where people struggle in the beginning is they, they can't differentiate between um, a, uh, a good opportunity, a great opportunity and an unbelievable opportunity. Um, right. Cause we'll, we'll never, we'll never, we'll never suggest bad. Andrew and I will never suggest bad opportunities, but we'll suggest good opportunities that uh, opportunities that are plus EV plus expected value. We'll, we'll give those the we'll shout everything out that we're taking, but we may take those for, you know, not that small. We try to say our units and everything, but it's in the heat of things. Sometimes it's tough to be completely accurate with what we're, exactly how much we're taking in relation to how much somebody else should be taking. But um, mm-hmm. so it's, uh, it's, I think it's being able to determine for yourself and this comes with time and, and, and uh, experience, but i um, trying to de- determine what's the really good opportunities versus what's the, you know, amazing opportunities versus what's just okay. Um, yeah. And people might put more on that. And then also with uh, also what goes hand in hand with money management is, is people chase um, people look yeah. at the, what am I doing for the day? What am I doing for the week? What am I doing for the month? What am I doing for the year? Um, I say you should just take out the day and the week part of it. You know, you can even take out the month part of it and see how am I doing for the year? How am I doing on these plays overall? Is this a strategy I want to continue following? You know, like, uh, uh, but when you start looking at it, how am I doing for the day? That's going to lead to overexposing yourself, especially take out how am I doing for the day part? Because if you're down, say, you know, for me, I could be down 80,000 in a day. Um, and, I'd be, and if I were chasing, I, I might, you know, go above and beyond myself and and go, you know, extra big to try to catch up. But that's, that's not something that should ever be done is, um, is chasing. Chasing is one of the, the biggest things that, that, um, you know, square betters, uh, uh, that's their biggest pitfalls. They chase, you know, they think, oh, well, I I lost the last two. I can't lose three in a row. And then they, you know, triple up on that. And next thing you know, they're, they're stuck in a hole. Right. Yeah. Looking at that balance and thinking about where it used to be and not being okay with that, despite the first wager, being a good wager that that leads to some bad decisions. But I think the number one reason why people won't be successful is excuses. That's a broad way to say it, but there's always an excuse. I don't have that book. I, uh, that book's not in my, uh, geographic area. Uh, my kids were bugging me that my wife won't let me, I, this, that, whatever the excuses is the only right. reason don't make yep. excuses, make it work or don't. Yep. Yep. Believe me. So Kenny, with that in mind, like, cause it is a fine line between, you know, chasing, staying just like all those things. So do you set goals and, and the people that you work, you know, like in a mentorship role with, do you suggest that they set goals? And if so, how do you do that? Um, to be honest, I always try to have a goal. Uh, I had a bet with, uh, when I first turned pro uh, several years ago, I, I bet with my buddy Rick, and um, I bet him a thousand. I said, if I said if these books have these lines next football season, I said I'm going to win a half million dollars during the football season. And he goes, No way. I go, All right. So we bet a thousand dollars, and then then we started betting basketball and and everything. And he saw how much I was killing it at basketball, and then I go, Well. Technically, the basketball season over over you know uh, will overlap the football season, and I just count all my pool, all my money together. He goes, "Well, you can't you can't count basketball," and, and I was like, "Well, I'm counting basketball." But uh, anyway, we ended up calling off the bet and and not not doing it. Well, 
I beat it in basketball and football for that for that next season. So if I separated yeah. them, put them together, doesn't matter. I I would have killed it both ways. Um, but so that I do put those little goals up, and my goal um, my goal for this year, um, I've already uh, two and a half times it, and we're only in May. Um, it's uh, yeah. But uh, well, I have a really lofty goal now is to make more than the McDavid this year after my after my really fast start. But uh, but I am my, you're gonna I have, have to get some to... endorsements and sponsorships right. if you're gonna. Kenny, them. my head hit the mic yeah. when you're saying I, I blacked out for a second. What did you just <laughs> is, say? Is is, is 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 NHL salary not not including endorsements and and everything? But his uh, uh, an awesome goal. Yeah. So. I'll need a big football season, but I'm off to a decent start. He's only slightly ahead of me right now. I'm just trying to beat the minor league guys, but hey, it's all relative. <laughs> but <laughs> that is um, really <laughs> it's a lofty goal. I, I like to challenge myself. Right. When I said I was going to win a half million for NFL, I, I'm coming off a season I only I only made like 150 thousand. So the, I always, I like to set lofty goals. The part As of- you should. That's why you're the best. The part of what you said is like that I'm shocked at is not like not one bit of my reaction is doubt. Like, I know you're going to do it. Um, It's just like, like, holy shit. Like you want to talk about the power of what we're doing. Kenny's goal is to make more than the top hockey player on earth this year, betting on sports. Like it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's crazy. If anybody doubts what we're doing, let's watch the last 30 seconds. Cause it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and to be, to be honest. Um, and, and I, and I, I don't say this lightly, but, um, but it's, it's completely the truth. If sports books didn't limit bets, didn't limit accounts, didn't limit this or that, it's not a question of if I beat McDavid, I'd probably beat him two times over. For yeah. sure. Do you think you should try and get, like somebody like Matthew Kachuk into betting and get him to retire because it's just telling there's not enough money in hockey. And then, uh, <laughs> then the Oilers would have a better chance of beating them every year. Get a real job, Kachuk. <laughs> Don't change, pal. <laughs> Unbelievable. Man, it's, it's just freaking crazy. Um, and that's the really cool thing about this show, right? I mean, it's one thing to be talking to Kenny, who's quite literally like one of the top people on this planet and what he does, he'd be on a very short list. Um, it, you know, but there's lots and lots of other people who are betting on the exact same thing. Kenny is and making, you know, really good money. And that's what's and so those, cool about And this. those guys know who Matthew Kachuk is and they're not making as much money. As yeah. Kenny has no clue. Tell. I don't know a single player you guys are talking about <laughs> other than McDavid. And I had to look him up to see who the top played, top paid NHL player was. I can, <laughs> I can tell by the way you laughed there that you have no idea who Kachuk is. Who's like, Matthew no in the group now? That's the- <laughs> Kenny, I'll, I'll bet you 10% of my winnings versus 10% of yours that you can't spell Kachuk's last name right now <laughs> without looking it up no right. hey a chuck <laughs> yeah k a chuck that's right 10 percent, please <laughs> uh, i love it we see we, we see it. it all the time though where where people core members guys who are making so much money just they they don't have the personnel knowledge that you would expect like like I got a buddy, oh, I think it's on the call today. He's he's joining. Like he's a sports fan. He understands sports. He, I, he doesn't generally watch sports, but he's really intrigued by what we're we're doing. And uh, fuck, I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, you don't need the knowledge to to win. Oh, uh, what I told him was, was you're going to come in with without the bad habits that I did, and you're going to come in and probably do way better than I did in the early days because you, you you're here to learn. I, I already thought that I knew enough to, to like maybe give my advice to others before I was ready to do that before I was ready. I like, he's going to come in and just listen. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. To be, to be honest, without giving any away, any specific strategies um, for what I do um, personnel, actual, the actual players probably mean, 
much, much less than the coaching staff for almost oh, yeah. every strategy that I do. Yeah. Um, so and that's tendencies uh, and trends, right? Yeah. Yeah. So coaching our, staff. Our producers say to go on to the and next every segment. Single, okay. Um, yeah, for, for sure, Kenny. And it's, uh, you know, it's just amazing. I mean, my best sport is college basketball. And I, it's also the sport I know the absolute least about. Um, but I, you know, like college basketball has become my absolute favorite thing to bet on. Um, it's the I best. Am, I and, am, I am wait. I am counting the seconds until college basketball I, restarts. I, I, I cannot love it. wait. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, one of the first times I ever talked to you, Kenny, you told me a story about when, when COVID hit and you mentioned it a little bit earlier on the call too. And you started to bet on Australian rules football because everything was shut shut down in North America. And you were telling me, you know, you're making a you know pretty not not Connor McDavid money, but you're doing pretty well <laughs> on on Australian yeah. rules football. And you didn't even necessarily like really understand the rules of the game, but you right. understand value, right? Like you know yeah. what value looks like and how to take advantage of it. And you know, it's 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 funny, like you can. Once you can spot value, you can spot it in a whole bunch of different things. And it's it like I couldn't begin to try to describe that or, or explain that to somebody, but but that's the yeah. name of the game for you, isn't it? It's just yeah, value, yeah, it's value, basically, value. Yeah, exactly. Just spotting value. Like and also during COVID, I was driving over the bridge at four in the morning, parking outside of a Wawa, which is kind of like a, a circle K or it's in the northeast, but it's a it's a like a seven eleven almost. But um it's basically like uh I was parking outside of a Wawa to, to steal their internet access so I can, so I can make my bets over in Jersey. Cause only the Jersey books had, had uh, the Taiwan Taiwanese basketball and, 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 uh, and all these different sports that Pennsylvania wasn't offering. So I was like driving over the bridge to bet those sports at four o'clock in the morning, just a uh, spot and value during COVID. But, it's unbelievable. And also like, if you don't think this is work and you don't think that, you know, like, how many of you are getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning to drive across the next state so you can you can earn your living? Right. Like I, work. I don't think that goes through the heads of uh, your average person. No, <laughs> but there's a that's part of what makes Kenny Kenny. Right. Like there's Absolutely. a drive there. Absolutely. You know? And just because just because you watch somebody and they're having, you know, it looks like they're having nothing but fun. Doesn't mean they're not working their asses off. You can do both. You can work your ass off and have a blast doing it. So it's really inspiring. Kenny. It's just it's so fun. For yep. sure. And to yeah. be honest, I, I'm always kind of researching new strategies and, and I found some stuff um, this week that I was testing out and everything, um, but I didn't want to bring it to the group um, until I really kind of tested it out. Well, yesterday, um, just, just like, just to you know, say like, I don't always win. Um, yesterday, I'm testing out this new strategy and I went 0 for 20. O for o for twenty yesterday, so that will not be a strategy I'm going to be continuing on with. But like, not but like it literally, I think it's due. I had it. I started with a theory. I started with a theory, and I'm like, all right, th this I think is going to be an amazing, amazing wager. And I went o for twenty, so uh, that'll no longer be something that I'll uh, I'll take moving forward. But but like I I kind of vet those things before I were to present them to the group um, and everything. So, uh, but that uh, that strategy is now in the trash. Yeah, so and that's that's the benefit of the group where. Um, there's constantly people vetting strategies and, and the masses don't get it until we know it's good. Right. Like, so right. that's, that's, uh, yeah. And, and Kenny, let's, let's just talk about it. Cause I'm really glad you brought that up because one of the, like somebody's listening to this and they've never, never done this before. They might think, well, okay, you've already got this thing rolling. You've got strategies that work. Like, why are you wasting your time looking for something else? Like you've already got it. But that is one of the, in my mind, one of the coolest things about how this works is it is the ultimate game of cat and mouse, right? The you, you said a few minutes ago, if the if they're still offering these NFL lines next year, I'm going to hammer because there was doubt in your mind as to whether or not they would, right? Because they're the books are constantly yeah. taking stuff off, putting stuff on, changing this, you know, adjusting to that, and so you can't. You can't, this isn't a set it and forget it strategy. You can't just keep doing the same thing for the rest of the time. You have to grow and evolve with the books. So talk about like, like that element of it and, 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 
And, uh, you know, do you enjoy that part? Is that something you, you know, you get a kick of you view it as a necessary evil? Like, you know, how do you feel? I, about that? I, I do. I do enjoy kind of outsmarting them um, in another way. Right. Uh, uh, that, that is uh, definitely enjoy. It's almost like, like um, solving a puzzle. Like yeah. I, uh, like I, I see the pieces <laughs> are there. It's just, how do I take advantage of those, of those pieces and how do I put it all together so we can all make money? That's yeah. basically the way I look at it. Um, sure. I have a pretty, pretty um, high mathematical mind. So it's it, that the numbers has come kind of natural with me and it's just, you know, I see it all there and it's just, you know, putting it, putting it, slotting everything together. Kenny, when, when you're getting close on something um, and this is one of my favorite parts of, of, of what, you know, this community gives is like, I'm really good at spotting something that might work but I'm not great at the, like the little fine tuning parts. Right. And, and so that's when I really rely on, on the people on, on our little kind of side team that we, 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 we work with um, to, to get people who maybe can look at it from a different angle and do it. So when you get close on something, do you share it with a, a few people and, you know, try to beat it up and make it better or like, how does that part work? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I like bouncing ideas off, the, off different people. Um, I do it within our group. I do it with, you know, my, my own group, I, I kind of do it with, with everybody when I, when I'm kind of thinking of some of the ideas and, and everything or, or vetting other people's ideas and, and, you know, trying to get those to work um, as well. But yeah, it's, it's definitely great to, to, have, to collaborate with, with other people. Um, right. You know, whereas, whereas before in play live, it was basically three of us that were just bouncing ideas off each other. Yeah. What do you do when you find one that you know is too good? Like you find, um, you find a strategy and you look and you're like, Oh my God, we are going to murder them on this one. Like it, describe sort of what that's like. Cause it's like a lottery ticket, you know, it's short lived. So, you know, like, what do you do when you find those? Sure. Sure. So, um, so, so the one that I thought I had yesterday, I was so excited <laughs> about, I'm like sitting there, like, you know, my son's like, like little league baseball game. And I'm like, like, you know, putting in some, putting in some wagers. I was like, damn, all right. All right I gotta wait till I get home. Gotta make sure that I'm in front of my computer and see everything while yeah. I got home, <laughs> made sure I was in front of my computer, saw everything and went and I continued to go another Oh, for 17 after the over three at the, at the baseball <laughs> game. I was so excited because I thought this was going to work and it just totally totally did not work um but i do have something else cooking right now for uh for baseball that i think will be a uh, a slam dunk and anybody on uh in play life pro um got a preview of that last night on on the stream yeah. with andrew and i yeah that's awesome that's awesome yeah it's um it, like that that aspect as i said like i just think it's so cool because it's it's the back and forth it's the you know, it's, it's finding those new ways to succeed. And frankly, it forces you to grow, right. Which is, yeah. which is something that like, if you don't have a growth mindset, you're not going to make it here. Like you have to be willing to grow and you can never be satisfied. You can never be comfortable. You always got to push yourself. So, well, um, and, and that's what this, this group has taught us all is that there, there are opportunities. Like I used to be of the mindset that the books are too smart to have these uh, places where they can be exposed and yep. that was dead wrong. There's, there's always a way if you're looking, scanning books and uh, paying attention, you, there's, there's ways to beat them. Absolutely. And, and it's also nice to have the community around you who doesn't put that doubt in your mind, right? Like a, a couple of years before COVID I was betting on when the ball was at midfield, um, and did great with it. And, and then um, like some buddies and one of them who may be on this call, who isn't named Kenny, uh, who's sitting right in a green t-shirt and a, and a hat. Um, he said, well, there's no way that's sustainable. There's no way if it was, they wouldn't put it up there. Like you wouldn't be able to do it. And I went, oh yeah, fuck you're right. Okay. I guess I better stop making money at this. I, I don't think I was <laughs> as, uh, no, oh, it was skeptical as our buddy John was, was like he, and I hope John's listening. Cause he, he basically said like, no, this is dog shit. You should bet pregame. 
<laughs> your game spreads. <laughs> and I say that teasing because John is like he's he's one of our our best pals and is now you know absolutely killing it with uh, within Play Live. So he, he doesn't mind the ribbing. Um, but it's you know like what we're doing goes against societal norms, right? Like it goes against what we're told is supposed to be. So it requires a little bit of um, not just bravery, but also some, you know, some self reassurance that this is real. And, and it's way harder to do that on your own than when, than when, you know, when you have a community. Absolutely. The average Joe Schmo that happens to tune into this and thinks, Oh, the secret is I'm going to bet on live markets. No offense, but you're probably going to go in there and get hurt. Like you, you, you you're going to have some stretches of success, but they are still really, really, really tough to beat. And, and, uh, that's, to that's be, where this, to be honest, to be honest, a lot of the live markets, I think in, in ways are much harder than pregame only because they, they hit you for more juice. So you have to hit, you have to hit it that uh, much yeah. higher of a percentage. Yeah, if, so it's like you better. Yeah, you're right. If you bet a pregame NFL game, you're laying minus uh, 1.9 or minus 110. If you're betting it in game NFL, you're laying minus 120 or, or more. Um, at a lot of the books. So, it's, be that so I would better. argue to say that, that it's uh, you have to be that much better. You have to hit it that much higher of a percentage. Well, and um, you're also going to have way more volume live betting, right? So not only is right. it more dangerous, but it's more dangerous and faster, right? Correct. Like you can lose yep. fast. If you also yeah, you have easier multiple positions. Chase. Yeah. Well, ways you yeah, chase. Yeah. Yep. Hey, yes. maybe, the, maybe, maybe betting is too hard. of. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it so kenny um what's what's next for you like you know you've you've been growing and evolving um you know i know you're always pushing yourself and it's not just about pushing yourself to make more money it's it's realizing that you need to improve in this area if you want to make more money so like what's the what's the area actually i'll ask it a two-part question over the last you know, year and a bit, what is the area that you have improved the most at? Um, and, and, and what's the next thing that you're trying to improve on? Well, I think, I think the biggest thing for me, um, especially with, uh, with, uh, with in play live is not necessarily the new strategies, which they've been amazing and that they're, they're unbelievable um, is just getting out of what my norm for my comfort zone was I never really thought about my bankroll as a whole as like a mm. percentage of betting. I kind of just bet flat the, the same number all the time. And I don't know if I would have increased it that much if the, if the opportunity, what if I didn't assess that the opportunity was bigger where I've my, my um, unit size has been exponentially increasing since I've joined in play live where um, I was always basically just a thousand dollar better. I just thought of myself as a thousand dollar better where now I don't bet anywhere near that. That's a that's a a, a minuscule bet for me now. Um, but where I feel like thousand dollar bets to lose now. Yeah, yeah, basically. because you didn't have enough on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so um, so that's I I think I might st- like if I never joined in play live, I might still be a thousand dollar better and then wait for those um, Alps or or whatever and just hammer those, which was really not a great strategy to do um, because you end up getting limited from hammering palps Uh, for people that don't know what that is uh, palpable or by the sports book where they put up a a bad line Um, they'll they'll win pretty much every time but uh, you'll get your account limited by hammering those Um, I used to hammer those all the time but anyway I think that's the biggest thing is where I've kind of grown my my bankroll exponentially and if for people that are members of in play live last football season they'll probably remember on one of the streams i accidentally added a zero to one of my bets um so my goal for this football season is to make that extra zero that i added to my bet my normal unit size bet for football can we tell that story because that was like hilarious <laughs> so you meant to bet like 16 grand and bet 160 wasn't it something like that yeah, it was thirteen and a hundred and about one hundred and thirty. Yeah. yeah, and then, and then like it was the best. Like I was watching Kenny, and he's you know he puts it in and he sort of goes away for a second. He comes back and he goes, oh oh shit, I added a zero. <laughs> That's one hundred and thirty. And then he goes, well this will be fun. And he just sort of, you know, <laughs> and then it won, right? Yeah, it did win. Yeah. It did win. But yeah. it was it was a stressful. It was a stressful about ten minutes for me. <laughs> But 
Yeah. Anybody so, who thinks zero is a small number, just try adding or taking one off. It, 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 it changes things in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so good. Yeah. Kenny, what do your kids think about what you do? Uh, my kids love it. My kids, my kids love it. They, uh, my, my son now wants to do it when he gets older. I was like, oh, I got to teach you the right ways. But I was like, well, you know, do the normal, you know, the normal, the quote unquote normal things uh, first and, and see if you have any uh, interest in those and, and everything. But I'm not going to be, I'm also not going to be a father that, that kind of pushes my kids towards college or anything like that if they don't want to. Yeah. Um, if, but. if, well, here's a follow up question then. Okay. So, so one of your kids says, okay, dad. I want to go to college, but I want to learn how to be a great sports better. I want to take classes in college. They're going to teach me how to do this. What do they take? Uh, load up on math. I mean, it's basically what it's, it's a lot of math. Yeah. Um, math, I, math I, and stats, I, eh? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. But, it's, um, uh, and, and I wish actually I could go honest, back and I, take I, my I, statistic courses again. I'd have paid way yeah. more attention this time. And to be honest, I, I would go with, um, I would go with, with programming too, because that helps a lot because there's so much math in programming. Yeah. Um, and that, that's, that's my background. That's what I went to school for, for programming. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. The techie guys seem to have quite a bit of success. Yeah. Guys, this was a great call. Kenny, thanks for, for filling in the way you did. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to get Kernsey on soon. His, his story is also, you know, just great. So, um, and this show, like, you know, it's starting to hit its stride. I, I really like kind of where this is going. Um, you know, we really struggled with the concept of, of doing a show like this where we didn't talk about specific strategies, but I, I feel like it's working and I feel like this is a lot of fun. And so, you know, thanks to everybody in the community for your support and, and thanks to, you know, for those of you who, who are watching this and, and you're not a part of in play live, but you want to learn more, learn more, but know that if you do like you're in, this isn't for the faint of heart, this isn't, a casual hobby. If you want to just dabble with this, you're going to get your ass kicked. You got to be in. And, and, uh, but if this is appealing to you, you want to learn about it. It's a pretty fun ride. It's, uh, it's changed my life in, in so many ways. So it's just, uh, it's just a blast. Yeah. Yep. Remember to, uh, are you got any, any parting comments, Kenny? Well, just, uh, also, um, uh, just for the, uh, for guys that are part of members and not pro or people that aren't members at all yet. Uh, if you join and join, there's a may promo for uh, in play, in play live pro. Um, and I'll be doing questions and answers all summer long to, uh, prepare for football and basketball and NHL for next season. Um, so I'll be doing uh, Q and a sessions all, all summer long for that. That's awesome. Guys, yeah. great Maybe. show. Ray finish us off, buddy. This is the only part I get nervous for when Pacer makes me say this shit. But uh, go on uh, YouTube or Apple or Spotify or fucking LinkedIn and like and subscribe. <laughs> Press some buttons. Just get in here. Start making some money. And uh, uh, go to inplaylive.com. Promo code Ray Adam. Don't think it works, but give it a shot. And uh, we'll see you next week. That's exactly how Pacer wrote it up for you too, eh? Like word for word. Right now, Pacer's hair is just... <laughs> he is definitely going to ask you to say that next week. Probably true. I've always had, <laughs> always had better reading comprehension skills than you. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Thanks, you guys. Uh, keep it rolling. And, and Kenny, once again, I uh, love you, brother. You're, uh, you're an inspiration. And, and just uh, thanks for everything you're doing, man. And, and we're happy it, for you. We, we couldn't be happier for you. You're the best. Same to you. Same to you, Adam. Okay. Thanks, you, Kenny. Okay. Take See care, you guys. Night. See you, boys.